The display property in CSS is one of those properties that uh, we've had for a long time, uh, since the very beginning, uh, and we use it quite a bit. And it does sort of several different things uh, that can be confusing the way that they interact. Uh, and there's something cool coming down the pipeline where we're starting to get more powerful and explicit values for display and the ability to combine them in new ways. And I want to show you how that works. Two of the values that we've had right from the beginning uh, and use quite a bit, uh, we have display inline and display block. Uh, and both of those values are part of what we call flow. Those are two different ways that elements can be in the flow. They can be block elements in the flow or inline elements in the flow. Sometimes we also refer to this as normal flow. Uh, and normal flow is the default on the web. Every time we're not in, say, grid or flex or some other layout system, we're in flow layout. Uh, and that's why it's called normal flow. It's sort of the air we breathe in CSS. Uh, and normal flow is pretty cool. The main thing that it does is when something changes size, everything else is able to move. And the two types of flow, we can see there right away, we have block elements and inline elements. Um, and the inline elements are able to wrap and they make their boxes bigger. The block elements create these boxes that always have this consistent square or rectangular shape. And we can see those boxes getting bigger and smaller to contain the inline elements inside of them that are able to wrap around corners. Uh, and so we can see this link doesn't have a consistent rectangle shape. That shape can break and wrap around a corner. Flow is this cool layout system that we've never really named very often. Uh, it's usually just there. It's just the way the web works. Um, but we're starting to be able to name that and say, this is flow. Flow has, there's two types of flow. There's inline flow and block, or that's the two types of elements in the flow. And when we set inline or block in the flow, we're defining how an element relates to its context. If the context is a flow layout system, then every element in that flow layout is going to be either an inline element or a block element. And so these are called outside values because they define the outside box of the element we define them on. So when we say p display block, which is the default, um, but we'll just say it here. That display block says that that is going to be a block level element and it should create that box. And we can also set that to inline and suddenly all of these are inline elements and it looks like a mess. Block and inline give us these outside values describing the box that's created for an element in the flow. Um, but we also have these other values uh, like flex and grid and table that do something different. They're not describing the outside box. Most of these by default create a block box. You get a block with flex on the inside if you set display flex and you get a block with grid on the inside if you set display grid. And you can also do inline flex and inline grid and I'll get to those in a bit. Flex and grid and table are describing inside values of display. Uh, and flow is one of those values. Flow is similar to flex, grid, or table. And now we're starting to be able to set that explicitly. We can use the flow keyword to say, this is not a grid, this is not flexbox, this is a flow element. This is creating a flow layout context. And that's useful if the element is set to grid somewhere else and we want to set it back to flow. Uh, we can now do that explicitly. Uh, it makes this more explicit, uh, it gives us uh, a little bit more control over what we're doing here and a little more clarity over what we're doing here. But we still have those two, the outside and the inside types of display. And then we get to these values like inline block or inline flex or inline grid, inline table. We got sort of a set of these. And what they're trying to do is combine how the outside and the inside are used together, uh, but all in one keyword, uh, strung together with a hyphen. 
Um, so we get inline block creates uh, an inline box with block on the inside. Inline flex creates an inline box with flex on the inside. Um, so we can start to mix and match outside and inside values, but only using these very specific keywords. Inline block is also weird because it does something else. If we have an inline block element, let's actually float this SVG we can see that a floated element breaks out of its box container. And one of the weird things about inline block is that if we set inline block on the container, suddenly it wraps around uh, all of the floats on the inside and it creates this new context. And this is called block formatting context. And there's several things that trigger it. We can also, instead of using display inline block, we can use overflow hidden or any overflow value that isn't visible. And there's a few other ways that we can create block formatting context. Block formatting context basically contains a new layout. Um, that's the idea behind it. If we set all of these block elements to display inline block, we can see that a few things change. The margins between them double. And what's happening is margins that normally collapse together are no longer collapsing together. So that's also part of this block formatting context. And that's a useful thing to be able to turn on and off. And it's a little bit weird that it's controlled sort of in these uh, unexpected ways and not explicitly. Um, so that's a new thing that we're getting also. Uh, that's now called flow root. So down here, rather than saying overflow hidden or display inline block, we can say display flow root. Uh, and that also works to contain the float. It creates a block formatting context. So flow root and flow are both new values that we've added uh, to get at some of the things that have been implicit before. That's still dealing with this outside and inside uh, that we've always only been able to combine with a hyphen. Uh, inline block, inline flex, inline grid. And these are now referred to as the legacy values of display. And they're being replaced by a more explicit syntax where we can combine multiple values in the display property. Instead of saying display inline block, we can say display inline flow root uh, as two separate values. Uh, one is describing the outside box, that's inline, and one is describing the inside box. And we can also, instead of having to do flow root uh, with inline, we can do flow root with block. And that's more what we expect in some cases. So we can start to combine them in new ways because we're no longer relying on keywords that put them together for us. We're instead able to put them together ourselves. That means some of the old values that we have now can be stated more explicitly. So where we used to say block, we can now say block flow. Uh, where we used to say inline, we can now say inline flow. With all of these, flow is the default inside value if no inside is set. And generally block is the default outside value if no outside value is set. Um, so instead of grid, we can say block grid. Again, these single values will work, um, but the combined values are more explicit if we want them and can be combined in new ways. List item, is its own thing. And we can add list item anywhere separate from the outside and inside. What list item does is it creates the marker box, the bullet point or numbering, uh, depending what the context is. Um, so we can toggle list item on or off, uh, as well as setting the outside and inside values. There are many other values of display. We can look through all of them. There are some weird ones uh, that we don't use very often, like run in and Ruby. Uh, that do very specific things and you should check them out. You can see here um, a lot of what we're getting is new ways of combining them, new ways of expressing these. We get flow, we get flow root, and we can start to combine them with other things. There's also these display internal values uh, that can be used in specific contexts and some global values and a few other things. But what's really interesting here is the new ability to start combining display values 
uh, ourselves rather than relying on hyphenated values being given to us, which allows us to be more explicit and also come up with new combinations that weren't possible before. Now, this is something that you might not use right away. It's something that you might wait until uh, there's proper browser support. So go check the browser support before you use it. Have fun getting more creative with your layouts.